Dr. Neil Geiswaller of Probabilistic Programming. Yeah, so I just wanted to give you a very short introduction uh, on probabilistic programming. Um, and, and yeah, just remember to raise your voice because we're competing against the actual digital word. The microphone isn't as good as our ears are yep. picking up the difference. So just, just to remind everybody, try and project your voice. Try to yell at the top right. of your lungs. Yeah, okay. just, just yell as though you're speaking at a pump or yelling at a pump. All right. And you're trying to win an argument, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so. I don't know if no does that. <laughs> so, probabilistic programming is, is a very uh, convenient way to basically calculate the uh, conditional distribution of about anything. And um, the way it works is that you basically you write a program and uh, in this program you have you have variables and you can just use this tool to calculate the distribution of some variable uh, knowing some other variable. So the way it works is very simple. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show you, so this is the tutorial of a church, which is a, a probabilistic programming language. And uh, here, here's an example. Here, they define a program, which is basically just uh, <coughs> flip a coin. I mean, basically, randomly choose one or zero, assign it to A, do the same for B and C, and then D is the sum of A, B, and C. And so, once you have that, you can do something like, okay, tell me how is A knowing that D is equal or above two. And so what their, what their tool is gonna do, which is here what they call rejection query, is just gonna run this program a number of times until the condition is met, it's going to look at A and but record record A, record the output of A, and it's going to do that. It's going to repeat that, and that way we're going to be able to visualize A depending on this condition: D is equal or above two. So they actually let you run that. Oh, let me try to. So it's here, run. And so here's the distribution. Value of A given that D is greater than or equal to two. And you can you can run it over and over and you see how the distribution varies. And of course if you put a large number you're gonna you're gonna converge okay so so there are a couple of things to say about this before that I'm just gonna uh, very quickly show how we could do that in open file so I mean, that, that's basically, that's a, pretty much a translation of, of the example that I just showed you. I just showed you. Um, so we've got, we've got a, a program, which is a list of definitions. Okay, we, we, keep, we, we randomly choose uh, <coughs> one or zero, we assign A to, we assign the result to A, we do the same for B and C, and 
D is the sum of A, B, C. And now we just want to know what is going to be the distribution of A given the condition. Actually, I mean, the, the, the way they, they do that, I mean, there's a, there's a simple naive way to, to solve that, which is that you take this and you transform it in a program that is going to run this main program until it, uh, 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 so e either it runs the program, either the condition is true and it returns A, or then it runs again the program until the condition is true. So that's a very naive way of doing that. But I, I actually tried to do it, but I was close, but I couldn't because I didn't have the uh, if then else link. It's sequential energy. What? Yeah, but, but the thing is that the output is, is the output um, a Boolean because I, I need to have any output, not just uh, you can put any output <coughs> if you use the. See what I mean? We don't have a truth value. We don't have that truth value for sequential function for sequential energy. I mean, it could be created, but that truth value function isn't there. It's my own. My mind is blanking. I mean. Uh, long, once long ago, I decided we didn't need an if-then-else link because the correct way I Yeah, yeah, would be sufficient. And yeah. Right now, I can't. Because uh, as long as you evaluate predicates, you, you don't need an if-then-else. An if yes, it's true. But, uh, yeah. yeah I, mean, I, I think I that's, big, that's the reason. <laughs> but, but anyway, I mean, uh, this kind of naive algorithm is, is almost irrelevant in practice because as soon as your program becomes just a tiny bit you know, complex, like finding a trace that is going to satisfy the condition, I mean, can be almost impossible. It's generally undecidable. And so you need to uh, use, uh, you, need, you need to use something better. And so they, they do use some sophisticated method, which I don't understand. But here's the interesting thing. So uh, be be before I, let, let, let me see if I have to, to say something more before I, I go further. Uh, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, well, um, hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, first of all, I mean, um, the, the the question in OpenCog would be, uh, how do you store the distribution, for instance? And I, I think we have, um, we certainly have several options, but there is one which I find rather elegant, which is to use actually the TV, the truth value. Um, and for that, you would just need to, to uh, extend the, the definition, the traditional way we are using truth value by not only represent distributions of probabilities or of our fuzzy values, but of anything you want. So a truth value would be, so I, I, I wrote a long GitHub issue about this. Uh, I call that generalized distributional truth value. And so the thing is that uh, if you do that, then you could just represent. So here, for instance, you could represent the district. Uh, so let, let, let me see. Uh, yes, exactly. You could represent, for instance, so this query. This query, uh, give me the distribution of A knowing a certain condition. You can represent this by an implication link. So here specifically, it's, a, it's an extensional implication link. And here you've got your condition. 
I'm using at time, but uh, I don't know if that's the right way to, to, to put it. It's just to have a sequence of things. Um, and maybe you can consider instances of D, I don't know. Um, and uh, as a conclusion, you have uh, what you want to observe, A. And so here you can represent the, the result of the query. And everyone and may not know what extensional implication is. Oh, OK. Uh, so extensional means that you only consider the members of the sets that you are trying to, to compare. Or, I mean, you, you, you have, so you have a distribution uh, between uh, two events, which are represented by uh, uh, sets of, uh, um, uh, how we call that, uh, I forgot, e elementary uh, 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 events. Uh, and so to, you have two sets on a, a, a probability space, and you, you just see how much they intersect, how much, uh, uh, if you restrict, uh, if you look only at, say, set, uh, uh, P, uh, how much, uh, in which proportion uh, Q overlap with P, and that gives you the probability of Q knowing P. And uh, when you do that, you only look at the, uh, at the elements, how many elements uh, you have in common. And so that's what the extensional means. Uh, the, the dual of extensional is intentional. And uh, intentional is, is actually pretty much like, like extensional, but instead of looking at the elements of these uh, sets, you are looking at the properties of these sets. So for instance, if you have, if you want to consider how much, uh, how much, uh, being a dolphin implies being a fish. Well, if you strictly if you strictly look at each member, say uh, individual fishes, you're never going to find something that intersects because dolphins are not uh, uh, are not fishes. Okay, but if you look at the properties, uh, yes, they they their habitat is uh, 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 the ocean. Uh, they blah, blah, blah. You, you can find a number of properties that they have in common. And if you look at the, how much this set of properties um, implies this other set of properties, you're going to find something meaningful. And so that's why the, the reason Ben introduced that is because in natural language, when you say something is something else, you often mean that. You often mean a combination, a mixture of something extensional and something intentional. And, and so just to, just to be clear that I'm only talking about uh, members, elements, and not properties, I'm using extensional here. And so my, so my suggestion is, is to use the, the truth value to represent the distribution. So for instance, here, after you run this program 100 times, you could represent this that way. You could have something that says, OK, um, so let me, given that the condition is true, the output of A is going to be, when it's 0, the probability I'm, I'm going to measure is going to be 0 to 25. Of course, it's not going to be exactly this, because there is only a 100 runs to collect this information, but say it's going gonna, it's gonna to be around that. And the probability of observing uh, that A equal 1 is going to be 0 to 25. And if you use a true value that allows you to, to represent any distribution, then, then you can do that with uh, any output, for instance. So here, here's another one. Um, oh, well, no, that's the same one, but just it's 
it's simplified using something that takes care of uptime just to say that if, if we get this condition and at the same time we get this result. Uh, I mean, it's used simultaneous extensional implication. I'm not sure, again, that's the right way to, to, to deal with that. But, but anyway, it was just to quickly craft something simple. Uh, so here's another example where the, um, the output is different, the condition is different. I don't know if I need to, to go over this, but well, let's do it. I mean, so here's the same thing. So that would be the church program. And uh, here we want to, to look at D given that A is equal 1. And so here D is not just 0, 1. It could be a value uh, between uh, pretty much, uh, I mean. 0, never. What? It's 0, never. Yeah. So I mean, it, it could be, because D is the sum of A, B, C, it could be uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. And to represent that with a truth value, if you, if you can have a truth value like the generalized distributional truth value uh, I suggested, then you can just, you can represent the distribution of the output as well. And again, here you, you can specify the number of observations you have, uh, you have based to calculate, um, to build this distribution. Okay, so now, well, so it's all good, but uh, again, like I said, um, like I said, generally, being able to find a trace that such that the condition is true is kind of undecidable in the first place. So how do you use this, this wonderful tool uh, to, to calculate a, a, a useful, useful distribution, to, to gather knowledge about <coughs> the programs that you run? And well, the answer is, how do you tackle an undecidable problem? Well, you need AJI. So, so, so basically, so this actually connects to an idea, to an idea of Ben, which is to wrap the intelligence of the system in a simple function that Ben calls a sample link. And in fact, if you look at that, it's pretty close to a sample link. I mean, here the condition you could see the condition as a fitness function that is zero when, uh, when the condition is not met, one when the condition is met, and uh, uh, here you've got something that, uh, that defines the, the, uh, well, the elements from which you want to sample. And, um, and then you could actually use that use the intelligence of the system to, to clearly sample, sample your program so that the traces actually uh, meet the conditions that you want, you want them to meet. And uh, yeah, that's about it, I guess.